and triple threat match. This thing, no disqualification. Kid Holiday, Chris Henry in there. Chris Henry, she's taking care of both. Five and carry position. Oh, yeah. Pure a big shot, Samoan baby. Drop. You know, I think we asked this question a long, long, long time ago when the first trailer for this came out. A if there's a long time ago. <laughs> I can still remember when that music used to make me smile. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, Chad, mm -hmm. if there was something strange in your neighborhood, who you gonna call? French toasters, strudels. No, no, no. Ghostbusters. Everybody knows that. Oh, no, no. Who? Yeah. John Cena! Oh, no! no. <laughs> I, I call oh, the guy. I call I the know, guy. I know. And I never see him. I never see him. <laughs> yeah. I remember I did that during one of our Ghostbusters. Uh, I forget what it was a long time ago. And I had everyone in the floor. Micah literally was like on his side, like just dying. I even got a reaction out of Caleb, who was as stoic as a fucking Terminator. Getting John Cena on people so hard, oh. it looks like they're in the middle of a bank heist. It was Everybody awesome. Yeah, exactly. And, it, dude. and honestly, Ghostbusters Afterlife is something I was very excited about. Because I remember when they said, 2020, the new Ghostbusters film's coming out. And then 2020 happened, and all of us and wished we 2020 were all ghosts. would not exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we, we all ghosted. From exactly, reality. it was just like, but, yeah, we don't exist for a year. Yeah, and now here we are, and Ghostbusters here Afterlife is on the horizon, here they are. about to finally come out, and I'm excited. You should be. Kind of terrified. Paul Rudd. Well, Paul Rudd, Finn Wolfhard. I mean, just and the fact that they got all of the original cast back. Original. Uh, well, except unfortunately for you know Harold Ramis who passed away. You That's... can't control that, not even as a Ghostbuster. No, unfortunately. <clears throat> but um, from what it seems like, these are uh, e this is Egon's family. Ooh, like Finn Wolfhard is Egon's grandson. Okay. And I think uh, I think they pointed that out in the original teaser trailer, which was awesome. If this is gonna be one of those things where like. He rediscovers his kooky old relatives, like, situation and stuff. No. Too many thousands of people witnessed the crazy shit that the Ghostbusters were Oh, doing. yeah, yeah. So I hope that it's fully recognized that the afterlife is real in this movie, that stuff. If there's any skepticism in this movie about ghost existence uh, and stuff. Chad, the, the film is literally called Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah. So Somebody's I think dead. I, I, oh, well, shit. well, yeah, Harold Ramis. Oh God. No, I mean, in the movie. Oh. Well, yeah. I Is mean, it gonna be like some quantum leap type shit. Maybe. Well, because here's the one thing about it. Bill Murray was the main reason why we never got a Ghostbusters three because Bill, you know, kept changing his mind. He's like, I actually, you know what? I want to do this in the movie. It's like, okay, we'll do this, and they did everything they could to write it. They had. I remember. I think it was like 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. They had everything ready to go. And then Bill Murray was just like, actually, no, I changed my mind. I want to die. I want to die in the movie. And then eventually, Bill Murray got his wish. He died in a Ghostbusters movie. It's just, it wasn't the Ghostbusters movie <laughs> any of us wanted. No. And here's, and okay, before anyone gets down in the comment section, it's just like, see, see, I told you. I told you these guys were, were trolling. It's like, here's the thing. I watched Ghostbusters 2016. It is not a good movie. Dude, there's a lot of... If you look at 2016 as a whole, there are a lot of things that happened in that year that were just like, all right, what the... What the, what the hell were we thinking? What are we doing? And Ghostbusters 2016, and th this takes nothing away from Kristen Wiig. This takes nothing away from Kate McKinnon. This takes nothing away from Leslie Jones. This takes nothing away from Melissa McCarthy. All four of those women are immensely hilarious in their own right. When they, ha when they have good stuff... But I'm sorry, when you repeat the same joke, and it wasn't funny the first time, I'm for the wonton joke, what, the one I'm talking about, it's like, beginning of the movie, it's just like, I asked for wontons. This is one single wonton. It's like, this joke isn't funny. Let's move on. You see this? One wonton. How come I don't have 
wontons. Like it says, in the, I'm like, can we move on? This joke isn't funny. It's not funny. Can we move on, please? And they repeat the joke two more times. And it's not funny. There's shit that is funny in that movie. Like, uh, oh, for instance, I love the ghost devices. Mm-hmm. I love the ghost traps. I love the ghost guns that they had. I love the proton packs that they had. It was all really good. Yeah. But the good is few and far between in a valley of just blech. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Shit that's not nearly as controversial. Like, the cgi to death Ninja Turtle movies are not good. Sorry. They're not good. Now, There's, why does nobody come at me with uh, torches over that? Well, because... Well, they're just not good movies, and that's the statement being made. 2016 Ghostbuster. Not a good movie. Not a good movie. It's just not... wasn't good. And it would seem <laughs> that they are trying to rectify it because um, Jason Reitman, son of the original director, Ivan Reitman, is directing this movie. Mm-hmm. They got some great writers on this. I think it was the writers of the Deadpool movie are in Ooh, on this. Shit. So really sharp wit. Mm-hmm. And also they they brought in a lot Which of the is original great cast. For Paul Rudd, of course. Sharp wit. Yeah. Because he's a very sharp wit. He delivers man. those, oh, those dude. jokes very well. He's a master at it yeah. at this point. So we got this queued up here. Let's give this a watch. This Ghostbusters Afterlife. Looking, trailer number dose. I'm looking at the trailer. Let's go. Here we go. You're a great mom. I don't know. I'm fine with Trevor. But with Phoebe, she really keeps me on the outside. That's normal. She's an awkward, nerdy kid. I was. Maybe a new home could be an opportunity to start fresh. I just wish she'd get into some trouble. There's still time. Hello. Dude. Imagine finding that shit. What are yeah. you doing here in A real one. Anyway? Yeah. We're completely broke. And our grandfather left us this creepy old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. Your father wasn't much of a homemaker. He could hardly... Annie! Yes! Annie Potts, dude. Janine. I wouldn't say that. The the receptionist. Yeah. Dude. Oh, hello, old friend. You went with the station wagon? It's the only one that had an engine. What a... Hello, old friend. Oh, it's good to be back. (laughs) <laughs> yes. What is happening here? A lot. Somehow, a town with no fault lines is shaking on a daily basis. Maybe it's the apocalypse. Be gone to That's a possibility. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? You experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic. You or any of your family. <laughs> oh oh no! Or <laughs> oh, it's the pun- Stay Put Marshmallow Man. Oh god! Oh my god! That's right. You guys hear that? Ooh. Coming. Oh. The whole city took like the Walking Dead. Oh! Yes! Yep. <laughs> oh, Dude. yes. Nice. Oh, mobile catcher. Dude, yes. Ghostbusters, we're ready to believe you. We're closed. <laughs> yes! Oh! So it's not, it's kind of they're dusting it all, but they're acknowledging its existence and it's not some big secret that it happened or anything. Yeah. Right? That's what it seems like. That's it, that is what it seems like. Also, I was wrong. It's not uh, the writers of Deadpool. That's uh, uh, Wernick and uh, Rhett Reese. Uh, the, Gil Keenan, he wrote Monster House. You remember oh, about the house that came yes, to life? which is so good. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, oh gosh, dude. I am so happy right now. I am elated. I, I just, you I'm, play, I'm you smiling, gotta, man. You gotta play him answering the phone one more time. I know, I know. I one more time, one more time. Occult books. That's Ray's okay, store in New yep. York. Yep. We're closed. You say that, Ray, but you picked up. You better open back up real <laughs> quick. <laughs> oh, shit's going down, man, and man I'm so around. excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, but also. 
right here uh, with uh, the inclusion of Janine. Yep. Uh, here, uh, here in this part. I mean, that right there to me, uh, there was a whole thing with her and Egon. Yeah. In the first movie, that they didn't. Uh, that was one thing about the second movie that really made me mad because they had a great relationship dynamic going on because you know he was opening up more to her and she was mm -hmm. actually concerned about him. But then the second movie, it's just like, oh, so she's with Lewis now. Yeah. Rick Moranis' character, which, don't get me wrong, I, I like Rick Moranis' character, but it, wh where was, where did all that come from? Well, I mean, stuff does happen. And you it see does, but... In, in social circles, people that you think are meant to be together, and then somehow it's the other guy in the friend group. I mean... And that's... I, I will say that that's true. You know, it does that's happen. very true. I, I, I've seen that where it just doesn't make any sense to me. And turns Boy, out to be have a long-lasting thing. Uh, yeah. But you know as well as you can tell as a friend that they both feel it, too. That that was there, you know. Yeah. But... but Timing is everything, and it doesn't line up with chemistry always. Not always. Yeah, you're yeah. right. And so, as maybe much she's as she's still handling his affairs at this point, like maybe. maybe she's handling. So there's still that connection there that they were so close that. Yeah. She would be well, the one each handling. well he trusted Janine greatly. I yeah. mean, because she was the she was the handler for the Ghostbusters right. throughout her entire career. Because according to unfortunately for her, <laughs> well. The what thing, a nightmare that would be to be well, the Well, and the thing is, Janine, I think eventually Janine just got used to it because in uh -huh. the second film, she just got into the groove of it. Yeah. And actually, you know, my dad for the longest time thought that they got a different person to play the secretary or to play Janine in the second yeah. one. And I'm like, no, dad, that's Annie Potts. And he's like, no, it's not. And I'm like, I typed it up and I'm just like, yes, it is. And he's just like, she looks completely different. I'm like, I know. She, like, got her hair red. She mm -hmm. dressed up more. She ditched the, the like, nerdy librarian right. look and went and, you know, just, like, a, changed her fashion style. I can understand why my dad would have thought it was a different person. Well, had it together at that point. Well, yeah, yeah. And, honestly, the more I see of this film, the more excited I am. Also, well, uh, what's up, old friend? The Ecto-1. Uh, the cool replica ones that we get to see at conventions and stuff. It's yes. always nice to run into those things. It is. Especially an OG an OG one like this. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen the ones where they updated like the Dodge uh the, the Dodge yeah. one that's got the extended they just back. Modified it. Yeah, the Dodge station wagon. But yeah. Also uh this right here, the whole thing with the home, with the, the town basically having earthquakes and everything having to do with this um they actually touched on this a little bit in the teaser trailer the person who owned this mine or the mine that we see uh them messing around with mm -hmm. uh you know they're at they're right there yeah uh is uh Shan is evo shandor the person who built the uh apartment building yeah. that is in the first movie where the gateway open opens up, up. Portal, yeah. yes so, this right here is something else. Probably another one. Yeah. In which, that's what gets me. And they actually talked about it, about how Evo Shandor had something like that. And uh, had something like that, and they never touched on it again. And knowing ultra nerds of the Ghostbusters fandom, you know, they had to hear that and just go, hmm, that's a plot device that we haven't touched on yet. Oh, yeah. Sequel! And then here we are. Here we are. God, dude, I'm still I'm stoked for this. I am super stoked for I this. I really wonder how much writers dig into like Reddit and YouTube reviews and stuff that other people because the writers can only be so much. The fandom will pick the last particle off the bones of this stuff mm -hmm. and then dissect that and and have understanding and explanation yeah, and it, of it. Well, the fandom know? will provide. Yeah. That's that's just like um, there's one thing for the longest time. A lot of people uh, in the um, uh, Warhammer, the Warhammer 40k universe, a lot of the fans had written stuff and written lore and stuff like that, and done fan films. Eventually, uh, the Games Workshop, the people who make Warhammer 40k, were just like, you know what? These guys are really good at animating. And they give a fuck. And, they, and they're passionate about the Warhammer universe. Yeah. Versus some writer whom we brought in from Harvard 
whom we thought would give us a great lore and, you know, good characters and all this. Instead, they're just dialing it in. They're doing the same tropes, the same crap that that franchises do when they go to die. Why are we not using the fandom who are actually passionate about this stuff and instead using people who don't give a shit? And that's my whole problem with certain things is just they put it in the hands of writers who don't actually care, directors who don't actually care, because they they think, oh, the director, yeah, if he's directing this, it'll get made. It'll get made and we can at least make money. They go into these study groups of like 20 people. Oh, God. And I'm like, dude, why the fuck do you need a study group when you can go on that Google machine and find places where people are talking about it of their own free will mm -hmm. because they fucking care? You're asking too much of, of studio hard heads, is it dude. To figure out what people are interested in. You're asking too much of studio heads and producers, dude. Studio heads and producers who are so Wait, far up their own God, ass. They dude. wouldn't know a hit if it jumped up and bit them. The stuff that they're doing right now with like Marvel and DC and stuff like that, we would have had 20 years ago if they would have listened to the Dude, panel. yes. It would have already happened. I feel like a lot of the shit that was as big as it was still wasn't as big as it could have been because they missed the mark by not doing that shit in like 2005. Yeah. 2008, when they already knew Spider-Man was huge. Then what, what, what the fuck are you doing? Just keep... Yeah. You know. and, like, you had every opportunity, but instead, no, it's just like, well, we can't find a director who does who wants to do it. It's like, oh, well, there's this young director here, you know, who actually, uh, we've seen some of his short films, and it's really good, and then all of a sudden the series is like... But he's not an accredited director. He doesn't have any projects under his belt that we know of. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with Ang Lee. You know that director from China who made those you know Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon movie where people fly through the air and everything. He'll know how to tell an Incredible Hulk movie story. Ha! Right. Yeah, but I mean, even look at what what has happened with Star Wars. Imagine if that shit, like what's going on right now with Star Wars, had been happening. When we were like fucking, you know, after <laughs> after, after the the prequels came out, if it had just not stopped there, and then we got the shit that, that we're kind of getting. Yeah, we would have gotten the Force Awakens. Yeah, you know, we've gotten Episode Seven, Eight, and Nine uh, when the when the iron was still hot in two thousand, like in two in the late two thousands, mm -hmm. instead of having to wait ten years. I just feel like it really had to die and then come back and then kind of die again and then come completely back now. Uh, well, you know, and, and as much as I want to say, as much as on. I want to say Star Wars is back now, there's still people who are at the head of it making decisions that literally makes no sense. Uh, for instance, Kathleen Kennedy. Why is she still the head of Lucasfilm? After the tremendous... Uh, I like, thought she wasn't anymore. They brought her back. To what? To my knowledge, she is still there. Let me look. From what I understood, there she was like locked in a position, and that was just for show. Here we go. Uh, da, 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 film producer. But she and it's uh, just, through okay, so her contract expires October thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Yeah. There has been no news so far of her getting, of her uh, getting um, new. Uh, of her getting a, a new contract. Yeah. Which, we, thank it, goodness. It kills me to even say anything like about her just simply because her name is attached to so much shit that I love. But so I don't it's want to stuff, act like she well, doesn't have any role well, in anything. No, here's the thing about boy, it, man. Oh boy. The, the people who produced the stuff with her mm -hmm. were great names, but whenever she went off on her own, she fucked up. Yeah. And that's the unfortunate thing. I mean... There's no, there's no shame in admitting she was involved with. No, great I, that's what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to act like this person hasn't. Hell, had, had built a resume that could stand the test of time against fucking anybody. I mean, but. hell, that's that's the thing. <clears throat> you, you know, you want uh, as much as I want to talk nothing but shit about her. She has been involved in stuff that is good. Oh my God, but at the same time, you have to think the Star Wars how much was her, is... how much was her, and how much were the other people involved. Yeah. So. Answer me this: When her involvement on the production of ET, you think she could tell Steven Spielberg what the fuck to do? Uh, probably not. You think she could tell George Lucas what the fuck to write? Probably not. Versus, you know, uh, the new uh, the new Star Wars movies. You think she was able to boss around uh, boss around J.J. Abrams pretty easily because of how easy he is and how easy he is to be swayed to I tell? Didn't she have something to do with saving Forrest Gump though? 
or something like that. I think I recently heard something about her doing something like that and a couple of other things that just probably never would have made it that ended up being really good. Well, and, and when you're in that position though, how are you going? Oh, it was Jurassic Park. That's what it was. But again, yeah. Look who look, the main producer on it was oh, Spielberg. Yeah, again, you know, like ET. But yeah, I, I get that. I'm just saying, there have been times where good decisions have been made, but there recently with the Star Wars movies has been it has not built my faith. Amount of bad decisions. I mean, Jesus Christ, look at that. You know, no, you she's been involved in great that, films. No. Like, I mean, I'm the seeing Star great Wars films shit. on here, and I'm seeing other films on here. I'm just like, Ugh. it's just a, like I was saying, it's a shitload of them. Oh, That's yeah. why it's like, of course, there's going to be crazy. Well, the thing you need to recognize here is executive producers uh-huh. usually just in name only. They had nothing to really do with the production. Yes. They were just forwarding the capital. Yes. Uh, whereas here, you know, E.T., Color Purple, Money Pit. Uh, Empire of the Sun. Empire of the Sun, which I love. I love. Money Pit, mm. I didn't like it that much. Always. Uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, I think I remember that. Arachnophobia, uh, which was which was an all right film. All right. Hook was one of the, a great a great swashbuckler a film. Jurassic Park. Love. No need to say anything else. And then we have a weird era Indian where the cupboard. That one was funny as shit. Alive. Milk Mo- Milk Money is a terrible film. Indian in the cupboard is an all right film. Congo, not a good film. Bridges on Madison County. I don't even know what that is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's got good reviews, but I don't really remember. Clint it was Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Twister, decent film. Yeah. I liked it all right. Uh, and then we have The Sixth Sense, Artificial Intelligence. Seabiscuit sea was a good film. Munich, War of the Worlds. Curious Case of Benjamin Button, good yeah. film. Uh, but again, David Fincher directed yeah. that, so... Adventures of Tintin, War Horse Lincoln, for, and then we have the Star right. Wars movies. That's where my problems start, is with the Star Wars shit, because mm. it didn't make for me, sense. It, for me, it starts in the 90s with... Uh, actually, no. Mm. Yeah, it starts There's in the 90s a couple, for me. but like... A large majority I, I was of going to say, right. in terms of her, in terms really of, in terms of like from her start with ET before and before Star Wars to here in 2012. So from 82 to 2012, in those 40 years, I would say she had a hit to miss ratio of, I would say, 85 percent. Yeah, 85 percent good. Pretty damn good. Pretty good. Yeah. And that's what it makes you wonder: were, were those mistakes that were made? really meant to to do I don't know what it was meant for because I just find it hard to believe that anybody would intentionally fuck that situation up so badly. I don't think it was I don't think she intentionally meant to fuck it up. It seems like the shit that was done seems so deliberately bad. In the beginning I don't think that she did but I think by the time Last Jedi rolled around that's when a lot of people started to lose faith in the new Star Wars movies, because yeah. Star Wars Force Awakens, when it originally came out, everyone was sucking it off. Everyone well, I was. I was hot for it. Mo, me too. And here's the thing. I was just like, okay, so they told a familiar story in the Star Wars universe uh-huh. to get everyone back involved with it, yes. get everyone back in. Now they're going to try and do something different. They did something different, all right. Yeah. And here's the one part about it I will say. Lack of creative direction because when you have three different when you have two different when you have a different director for every film and that director wants to write their script and not only that they only they want to write their script and they also want to tell their own individual story and forsake everything that happened in the previous film yeah you got a problem as much as i love ryan johnson I loved his work in Brick. I loved his work in Looper. I loved his work in uh, Knives Out. He's a great director. I would let him develop his own Star Wars trilogy. Yeah. 100%. Let let him develop his own Star Wars trilogy. Boom. Bingo. Off to the races. We have a winner. But when you go from Abrams to, to Johnson, and then from Johnson back to Abrams... Which Rise of Skywalker went through three different directors before eventually they settled on J.J. Abrams, 
and they had so much time to make up on it. They had to, they didn't have that much time mm -hmm. to finish the film. <clears throat> Excuse me. But again, I where there's no Star Wars movies on the horizon after Rise of Skywalker, and they're now focusing on television deals and or you know yeah. Disney Plus and all that. I'm convinced that she's going to be done, and the new Indiana Jones movie, if it gets made, is going to be the last thing she's involved in. Well, who knows, man. I just know that that was a definite fumble, and I'm glad to see it. A lot of things, actually, taking a turn in a better direction. I'm hoping it stays that way, too, because to write the ship after the massive collision that we've experienced is going to be quite the task. Yeah. Mandalorian's done a great job pulling a lot of the old fans back it's in. It's given us hope. Yes. It's the new and, hope. And yes, it is. And starting to be the old hope until the next season comes out. Oy. Because our brains have been so And again, they've halted production new, new, on new. that on that series because of the ordeal with Kathleen Kennedy because John Favreau and Dave Filoni do not like Kathleen Kennedy. Because she's tried to come in and sabotage their project from the very beginning. Like, every time she tries to get, come in there, and John Farrell's just like, Kathleen, get, get out of here. Get, just go somewhere else. Because, mm -hmm. honestly, he just doesn't want to be bothered. Same thing with Dave Filoni. But, anyway, yeah, we've ranted and raved on a two-minute trailer well, we for did. 26 minutes. <laughs> but, eh, that's par for the course. What do you expect? Yep. Anyway, let's move on, everyone. This was... Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer number two. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully we will see you all in the next one. So until then, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. We'll see you, everybody. Peace out.